Um, let me ask you this. You were just telling us, and you were giving us a little briefing on Alex Cooper. You're a listener of Alex Cooper. I mean, you worked for Trump, right? Mm -hmm. um, you've had a conservative background. She has a quite a diverse audience. If you were giving the Biden team advice on how to reach people like you who may not have said they're going to support Harris but might be open, what outlets would you have them do? Uh, that's a great question. And I think Caller Daddy was such a smart move for them in that uh, graphic that you guys showed. It shows the breakdown of even the political leanings of that audience. You had, I think it was like 48 percent Democrat, 24 uh, percent Republican, 20 percent independent. Mm -hmm. And so that is smart for them to meet these voters where they're at. I think um, in particular for her to be targeting young women is so important. Um, and so I think that Call Her Daddy was a great start. I know a, a, a bunch of my friends listen to that show who are not politically engaged. Engaged, who what else will, do they listen to? I would say they listen to the Morning Toast um, with the Oshrey sisters. Okay. I think that would be a huge one. During the pandemic, actually, the Biden White House did um, a good job of putting uh, officials on shows like that. And as did the, uh, the Trump White House, they kind of tapped into doing some of those uh, non-traditional media podcasts during the pandemic to get that message out there. So I would say something like uh, the Morning Toast would be a good one. They call themselves the Millennial Morning Show. Um, big fan of them as well. So I think when you're reaching out to non-traditional outlets like that, you're going to break through because these clips will live online as well. It's not even just the viewerships. It's going to be the TikTok videos, the Instagram reels that are going to get millions of views and the people who consume it will get that tiny snippet of whatever the message is. I mean, Kamala Harris saying on Call Her Daddy that women do not aspire to be humble and this isn't the 1950s anymore. That has gotten a ton of traction and I think it resonates with women and it goes in line with what this campaign has been about, which is, you know, the the Trump campaign, they've kind of been attacking women. They haven't been making the case to them when you have J.D. Vance out there saying things like childless cat ladies. And the Trump campaign has been doubling down on this strategy of targeting young men like we were talking about going on podcasts like Theo Vaughn and Logan Paul. These names might not mean anything to you guys, but these are influencers that a lot of young men listen to who aren't politically engaged. It's a really interesting, I mean, to your point on